Source of Calibri's latest creation, Beam Sensor. The lighter you don't even have to touch to light. When open, just break the beam of light and watch the lighter light with the pass of a petal, a plume, a pin, even with a person. Calibri's new Beam Sensor. The lighter you don't even have to touch. To Calibri light. lighters are available at Highlands. Oh, look, Harriet. There's Emma at the town picnic. When we told her we switched to Kraft yeah. Real Mayonnaise. Oh, she thought we'd lost our minds. Until we told her Kraft looks creamier. Well, it is specially blended over 3,000 times. How's it taste? Try it. Go ahead. Mmm, now that's creamy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Emma. She never did photograph well. But doesn't the Kraft look good? Creamy Kraft Real Mayonnaise. And now, Kraft Light Reduced Calorie Mayonnaise. Creamy taste with half the fat. Now, John Beard, Kirstie Wilde, Kevin O'Connell, Weather, Fred Rogan, Sports. News 4LA, number one at four. Good afternoon, everybody. A strong earthquake jolted a wide area of Central California and Nevada this morning. It caused rock slides and kicked some items off shelves as it rolled from the mountains to the coast. The quake measured 5.7 on the Richter scale and was centered about 15 miles north of Bishop in the Owens Valley. Our John Marshall is in Bishop and is standing by on the phone now with a live report. John. Well, John, the full force of this earthquake was felt here in Bishop, just southeast of the epicenter. One resident told us it was a rip-roaring quake, a good-sized jolt. Still, the damage was quite minimal for a 5.7 earthquake. They had to clean up the aisles at a local Safeway store. Several small rock slides were reported. But nobody was seriously hurt. In fact, no reports of injuries have been received as of this hour. A police dispatcher did say the shaking made her a little sick, a little dizzy. She received numerous phone calls from residents who were also nauseous, she said, from what seemed to be a bit like a roller coaster ride. One woman said the quake caught her in the shower. She said it was quite an experience. This region is the main source of water for the city of Los Angeles. So four dams in the Bishop area had to be quickly checked out by concerned water and power workers, but those dams were okay. Up at Mammoth Mountain, the ski lifts were jammed, of course, with heavy traffic, the holiday skiers on the lift, so those lifts had to be shut down until the chairs finally stopped swaying several minutes later. So this earthquake was noisy, it was scary, but when the strong shaking finally stopped, Bishop residents realized it had somehow done little damage. They were lucky this time. Reporting live, John Marshall, News 4 Bishop. John Kiersey. All right, John, thank you. We'll have a further update on the quake today at 4.30 and on News 4 LA at 5 and at 6 o'clock. Kiersey. When a quake of any size happens anywhere in the world, attention turns to the seismology lab at Caltech in Pasadena. Caltech's instruments confirm the size and location of this morning's 5.7 quake just north of Bishop. And a short while ago, while News 4 LA cameras were at the Pasadena lab, its instruments recorded an aftershock to the morning quake that was considered just a small jolt, though, that second one. The biggest aftershock took place an hour after the main quake and measured 4.9 on the Richter scale. Today's quake was also measured, of course, on seismographs at the U.S. Geological Survey in Menlo Park. The quake shook the San Luis Obispo area where the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant is. Operators say the tremor had no impact whatsoever, though, on the plant, and the workers there said that they didn't even feel it. However, the quake was picked up by a sensitive seismograph at Diablo Canyon. The nuclear reactor is now operating at 30% capacity for the first time. It is located near an earthquake fault, and of course, opponents of the plant have long been concerned about its ability to withstand an earthquake. A suspect is in custody today in the shooting death of a Riverside County boy. As News 4's Vicki Vargas reports, the Rancho Cucamonga boy was killed yesterday as he tried to save his cousin from being kidnapped. Relatives say 11-year-old Daniel Ostentowski and his 13-year-old cousin Shannon Prock had walked to a nearby 7-Eleven store to buy some candy. It was just minutes after the family finished their Thanksgiving feast. As the pair headed back to the family gathering, police say 25-year-old Horace Kelly pulled his van up next to them and tried to kidnap the girl. Police say the suspect, Kelly, was parked along Limonite. They say he grabbed Shannon first. Her cousin ran out into the street for help. Shannon managed to get away and climb over this fence. But by then, her cousin was dead. According to police, Kelly shot the boy once in the head. Shannon's mother says her daughter is too distraught to talk with anyone and that she cannot accept her cousin's death. Danny died trying to save her life because he grabbed her first. 
and she feels terribly guilty. She said, uh, I should be dead, not Danny. It's my fault. And I'm trying to make her deal with this, that it's not her fault. Investigators say the girl identified the suspect just hours after the shooting. Kelly reportedly works nearby as a security guard. He has a job in the area, and he was supposed to be at work. Do you know if his job involved carrying a handgun? His particular aspect of the job did not involve a handgun. Today, Mrs. Prock is thankful her daughter is alive and can play in this quiet neighborhood, though she does have one nagging thought. If we'd have driven the kids to the store, Danny'd be alive. Vicki Vargas, News 4, Pedley. Kelly is being held in Riverside County Jail with bail set at $250,000. John. The parents of Baby Faye have broken their long silence in the first of a two-part series published in the new issue of People magazine. They talk about their baby and her fight to survive with a baboon's heart. The parents, identified only as Teresa and Howard, say they never doubted their decision to go ahead with the transplant operation. They say they weighed all the pros and cons and decided that if they didn't do it, they'd always wonder if Baby Faye had been given her best shot at life. They say her real name was Stephanie Fay, named after actress Stephanie Powers. The magazine still won't reveal how much it paid for the interview. Six tons of marijuana were seized along with four suspected smugglers on a sloop off San Miguel Island late yesterday. The 60-foot sloop was towed into Oxnard where today customs and drug enforcement agents unloaded the haul which was packed in bales and then wrapped in plastic. Coast Guard officers had approached the boat for a safety check when they noticed a peculiar odor. The boat itself had been stolen from a U.S. Customs storehouse in South Carolina a year ago. All four suspects surrendered without a struggle. They included three Americans and a Colombian. The boat's captain is identified now as 26-year-old Richard Westervelt of Portland, Oregon. The day after Thanksgiving means the traditional start of the Christmas shopping season. You've got just 32 days to get that something special for everybody on your gift list. Here's a team report now on the shoppers out in force today, starting with Jim Thomas in the South Bay area. Jim. How are you? Uh, we are down here at the Del Armo Shopping Center, the largest shopping center in the world. We've got quite a crowd down here. It's impossible to get a parking uh, space. Some figures that were released last week, John, indicated uh, they were Commerce Department figures, indicated that retail sales have been in a slump since September. And the big question on the minds of uh, merchants and retailers right now is what effect that's going to have on the Christmas season. We have Jim Sladen right here from the Merchants Association, and I wanted to ask you that question, Jim. How are things shaping up for this Christmas season, judging from what you've seen today? Those figures must not apply to Southern California because our department store figures throughout the uh, area have been up very strongly through the fall season and particularly in November. Now, how do you predict this year will com uh, compare to last year? I and looking over the figures, most of us predict that we'll still have at least what we call double-digit increases, at least over 10 percent. Nothing to worry about here. Nothing right. to worry about. In fact, the crowds today are a good indication of people buying. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate you stopping by to see us. And I know what you're thinking, John and Kirsty. You're wondering about all these people, what they're looking at in the malls and looking for that special uh, gift for the holiday season. And we went in and checked some of them out and uh, some new items that you might be interested in. Here they are. Anything that has to do with video is hot again this year. A new brand name has entered the television market. Proton brand TVs cost more than other brands, but may be just the thing for the discriminating viewer in the $800 to $2,000 range. Sliding down the video scale, we find the new wrist televisions at about $300. They're not completely Dick Tracy style self-contained yet, but they are unique. So is this hot selling item called an Omnibot, also priced at about $300. This robot is programmable seven days in advance. What it does, it, can, it has two different alarms in the clock, so it can wake you up in the morning. It comes with a tray that it can carry drinks or food. For the parents with a bottomless wallet, there's the Jenny Wren dolls. They range from $80 to $800 in price, are handcrafted of porcelain. What kind of person buys a doll like this, Terry? Um, actually, a doll collector, or just somebody who just takes a fancy to one. Are they difficult to sell? Is it running cycles, or are they pretty hot-selling items? Um, well, the one we have sold was, was the first one we sold, and she just fell in love with it and had to have it. Those are the high-ticket items, as, uh, as you probably noticed by those prices, John and Kirsty. But I'm told by several merchants that one of the bigger items, the, the items that they cannot keep in stock right now, are anything fluorescent, fluorescent scarves, fluorescent shoes and socks, anything like that. And John, I know you probably want me to put you on the waiting list for a pair of those. 
And we're going to go back to uh, uh, Bob Navarro right now. He's waiting for us at South Coast Plaza. Bob? Well, Jim, even in a simple news story, apparently, or shopping story, there appears to be no way to avoid controversy. You started your report by pointing out that the Alamo Shopping Center was the largest in the world. We've been told by people who study such things that this, the South Coast Plaza Shopping Center in Costa Mesa, is the largest in the world in terms of dollars spent. And indeed, the merchants here are looking forward this year to shoppers spending some $54 million between now and Christmas. And indeed, that is something to howl about. Those are the kinds of sounds many of us make when looking at what Christmas is going to cost us. However, retail studies indicate that this year, Americans have more to spend and are more willing to spend it than any time in the last five years. South Coast Plaza merchants report that the big ticket and luxury items are selling better than ever. And here is a for instance. This is Omnibut, the nearly human robot. It sells for $275, and it can do everything from act as a cocktail waitress at your next party to serving your breakfast in bed, to waking up your wife or husband. You take him into your bedroom, you go to your wife's side of the bed, and you record into his, into his unit her favorite song, say. That'll wake her up. You bring him around to your side of the bed. You can wake up with alarm sounds, or your list of things to do. For most of us, however, the modest items still top the Christmas list. Clothes, cards, books, and toys, and more toys, and games. That's for yourselves. Yes. More money to spend this year than last? Uh, no. No. Much less. I'm now, I'm now a full-time student, so I'm a Mr. Mom, so we have half the income that we did last year. But for others, it's a different picture, and for some, it's all brand new. So this is our first Christmas together, our real first Christmas, and so something for him, I don't really know what as of yet. So, a lot of fun, and the way the volume's been today, I must say, you'll probably hit that 54 million and a half the time. Reporting live from the South Coast Plaza Shopping Center in Costa Mesa, Bob Navarro, News for Orange County. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. Coming up, Kevin O'Connell has a special treat from the Magic Kingdom for us. And we'll show you the high water that sent some Florida coastal dwellers running for cover after this. <laughs> Explore, create, and invent at the Los Angeles Children's Museum, where kids touch the world. For more information, call 687-8800. Blackout. But both families have rechargeable lights. One has ready light from First Alert. The other family has the other leading brand. There's a big difference. Ready light lasts 50% longer on a single charge. It stands by itself and shines the light where you need it. Get the rechargeable light that lasts 50% longer. Ready light from First Alert. Because your family comes first. Look for the full line of ready lights. Great Christmas gifts for the whole family. It's Robinson's After Thanksgiving Sale and Clearance. You'll save 40% on genuine African ivory and on semi-precious jewelry from Mona Soul. Our classic Porter Career pump in an extensive selection of sizes is just $39.99. Save 50% on our famous maker raincoats for men. Our premier famous maker Oxford cloth button-down dress shirt is just $19.99. It's all happening now at Robinson's. Way back in the 30s, Bob's invented the double-deck hamburger. We called it the big boy. Some folks called it a meal in itself. A few years later, we added even more and called it the big boy combo with french fries and a crispy green salad. Today, you can enjoy this famous combo at a special price of only $1.99. And isn't that good news? At Bob's Big Boy, we love good food just like you do. This Sunday only, Collector's Art returns to Los Angeles to sell out hundreds of oils at $29 or less. Plus, gallery oils at a fraction of their retail value. Save up to 80% on fine art this Sunday only, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is our final sale before Christmas in Anaheim at the Anaheim Convention Center, in Universal City at the Sheraton Universal, in Pasadena at the Huntington Sheraton, in Costa Mesa at the South Coast Plaza Hotel, in San Bernardino at the San Bernardino Hilton, in Torrance at the Holiday Inn, in City of Industry at the Industry Hills and Sheraton Resort, in Ontario at the Ontario Red Lion Inn, and in Oxnard at the Oxnard Hilton. High winds and heavy surf pounded the Florida coastline for the second straight day today. Five people are dead in storm-related accidents. 
As much as nine inches of rain fell in some areas, streets and buildings are flooded in cities stretching from Jacksonville south to Palm Beach. The Coast Guard had to rescue the crew of the Venezuelan freighter Mercedes One, which slammed into the port of Palm Beach in the storm. The ship beached against a seawall. The stormy seas ripped apart the St. Augustine Pier, only 200 feet of that 1,100-foot pier is standing today. Meanwhile, in Alaska, officials today are deciding whether to declare Juneau a disaster area following yesterday's fierce storm up there. High winds tossed around ships anchored off the coast, sank some other ships. Damage to Juneau's marine park is estimated more than a million dollars. Gusty winds also flipped over planes at Juneau Airport. The gusts were clocked at more than 90 miles per hour at times. I wonder what that makes the wind chill up Boy, there. I don't pretty know. cold. I'll bet it is. Let's check our weather. Our weather is pretty nice compared yeah. to that. Very nice. Let's go out to the Magic Kingdom now and check in with one of our favorite families, the O'Connell family. <laughs> oh, now wait a minute. It's the season. <laughs> I thought you were going to say there's Goofy. And we finally got Goofy with us this year. Welcome, everybody. This is probably the nicest place and the happiest place in the whole doggone world today, and one of the busiest, I, I might add. Before we go any further, I have a lot of people. John and Kirsty wanted to wish you happy birthday, Donald. All right, and we had a big party. All the kids were wishing him happy birthday. You want an inferiority complex. There are more flash bulbs going off here tonight. The reason we are at Disneyland is because next hour, we are going to light the official Disney Christmas tree. I want you to take a look at this absolutely fabulous tree. It came from Northern California. Dave, let them take a look at all 60 feet of this baby. It is beautiful. It has 2,500 lights, over 1,800 ornaments on it. And when we see you live next hour on the 5 o'clock edition of News 4 LA, we're going to light that baby up. And boy, is that going to be something. So you're not going to want to miss it. Here are the facts and figures that go along with today. A very busy shopping day, 67 right now. Barometer is steady. 40% is the relative humidity. We had a high reading of 67 and a low of 46 earlier this afternoon. Satellite picture this afternoon showing uh, most of the national weather very calm, except if you're down around Florida. They had an awful lot of weather to contend with there today, a lot of clouds as well. You can see that storm system that moved by us yesterday is starting to move into parts of New Mexico, into Arizona, causing an awful lot of rain and snow in the higher elevations. What we had to contend with today was a little weak coastal eddy, a low-pressure area. It's starting to move to the east now, but look on your screen. You see that front? a line that is moving in that's going to start throwing rain into the northern and central part of california later on tonight and it's going to be giving us scattered clouds by the breakfast hour look how long that system is it's almost back all the way just north of the hawaiian islands this afternoon so indeed it has a very long tail associated with the system and we can be anticipating that over the next day or so we're going to be having clouds our best chance of any rain by the way from that system will happen late tomorrow night but it should be clearing out just in time for that big ball game coming up on Sunday. So here's what our forecast looks like at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Later on tonight, our sky should be clear, and we're going to be looking for generally cool conditions around the Southland, 50 the overnight low. On way tomorrow, we should have increasing clouds on the breezy side when that front starts swinging through. Daytime high will top at 66 degrees. Balance of the weekend, we're going to have a slow warming trend going from the mid-60s to the low 70s through the period. And as far as any precipitation, it looks like tomorrow evening again will probably be the best chance of any rain. For your information, we'd like to remind you about another special event that's going on this coming Sunday. It starts at 3 o'clock. It's a free concert of classical music. The Hall of Liberty at Forest Lawn is the location in the Hollywood Hills, presented by the uh, CSUN Youth Orchestra Academy. If you would like more information on the free concert, please bring the family or call that number on your screen. The area code there is 818. Kirstie and John, a couple of new things going on in the holiday out here at the Magic Kingdom in Anaheim. They have the fabulous Christmas Fantasyland Parade, which is going for all the people out here on the weekends. And over at the Country Bear Jamboree, it's the Christmas Country Bear Jamboree now. And they're all decked out and ready to go. Hey, did you have a good time in the Thanksgiving Parade in New York yesterday? Boy, how was the flight back? Was it a little bit tiring? It was okay. First class accommodations. Coming up next hour, though, we're going to light the tree. And boy, that's going to be a lot of fun. So join us coming up next hour here live from Disneyland. We are going to light the annual Christmas tree and get this thing off. Y'all ready to join us? Yeah! That's it from Disneyland. Kirstie <laughs> and John with me and 30,000 of our that's close what friends. Kevin we'll likes. see you next hour. Thank you, Kevin. He likes to interview people who can't talk back. I know. I know. What a nice family that is. Uh, yes. We'll see them at 5 o'clock. Now, Harvey is here. This is mailbag day. What do you have for us? I'm the, the legal Santa Claus today. <laughs> Viewer has a neighbor whose son apparently terrorizes their neighborhood. The son knocked down our viewer's fence. She wants to know if the time limit for filing a lawsuit, what the time limit is, and whether to sue the parents or the child. Now, as for the time limit, cases involving negligence or willful misconduct that result in property damage generally have to be filed within three years of the date of the incident, three years. 
Now, as for suing the child or the parent, I recommend suing both. There could be a problem. With few exceptions, parents are only legally responsible for the willful misconduct of their minor children. Now, if the child is merely careless, that isn't enough to hold the parents liable. The child must intentionally damage someone's property. Now, in deciding whether it's a case of willful misconduct, the child's age is important. If the child is so young that he or she doesn't know any better, a judge may not find willful misconduct. So the older the child, the more likely the judge would rule it's a case of willful misconduct, and the parents would be responsible along with the minor. Now, John and Kirsty, even if the parents are responsible, I still suggest you sue the minor, because judgments are good for 10 years, and even if the child doesn't have any money today, he may be earning money six, seven years down yeah, the road. Yeah, what happens if a child is old enough, say, 13, 14, to take the car and gets in an accident? Would that age, could you sue, be more likely to win if you sue the child? Well, I said at the top that there are some exceptions to this rule that the parents are only, are only liable for willful misconduct. In a case where the child takes a car with the permission of the parent, there the parent's going to be responsible even if the child is simply careless. So the parents are generally more responsible. But that's if the parents give them permission. If or they take if the, the parents leave the keys around so the child can take it. If the parents don't guard the, or don't monitor the child enough, the parents are going to be on the hook. Mm -hmm. We have another problem from a viewer. Um, I received a letter from someone, this is per fairly typical, someone who fell in a college cafeteria. Now, he wants to know how much money to demand from the cafeteria above and beyond his medical bills. Now, I think the viewer is putting the cart before the horse in this case. Just because someone slips and falls on someone else's property doesn't mean the property owner is automatically on the hook. The victim would have a case only if the accident could have been avoided by reasonable precautions on the part of the property owner. I'll give you an example. If the viewer slipped on a banana peel that another customer had dropped only seconds before the fall, the college cafeteria probably would not be responsible since it's not reasonable to expect that a dangerous condition could be corrected instantly. Now, on the other hand, if the banana peel had been there for 15 minutes before the victim slipped, that could be a different story. A court would be more likely to rule for the victim since a cafeteria would have had a reasonable opportunity to spot the danger and eliminate it. Now, my suggestion in this case is simply to call a lawyer and run the case by the lawyer because it's, it's not really wise and it's going to cost a lot of money to file a lawsuit only to find out there's no liability. Lawyers can spot this. There are so many cases like it. Okay. How about headlines on trial tomorrow night? Tomorrow night we're doing whether prostitution should be legalized. 6.30. Oh. Okay. okay. Harvey, Thanks thank a lot, you. Harvey. Also today on the 4 o'clock hour, an update on that 5.7 earthquake that shook the Mammoth Lakes area today. We'll introduce you to a high school science whiz who may have come up with a revolutionary energy idea. Sandy White will wrap up her Santa's Bag series with a look today at the sinister world of toy espionage. Our pharmacist Max Stolman drops by with news of a simple, inexpensive new test for a little-known but serious venereal disease. And on Front Page People, John will talk with the newest star of the TV series, V, Sybil Danning. That's right. Those stories and a lot more still to come on News for LA at 4. The U.S. Border Patrol needs 850 men and women agents nationwide. If interested, call 213-548-2620. It's a beautiful new designer fashion, but those prices... Don't pay department store prices. Come with me to Ross. You see before you thousands of designer fashions. Now look at the price. Any price. Ross saves you 20 to 60 percent. Is this a special sale? No. It's the Ross low price every day. You want the latest fashions? Of course. You want the greatest savings? Yes. You get both at Ross. The whole family can save on quality brand names at the Ross near you. Seeing is believing. Anthony Martinetti lives in Boston, in the Italian North End, the home of the Prince Spaghetti Company. Anthony knows a lot about Prince because it's something that grows you. Most days, Anthony takes his time going home. But today is Wednesday. And in the North End of Boston, Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day. Mm, you're not so smooth, my beauty. I'd rather be playing Scrabble. I'd rather be playing Scrabble. Stay home and play Scrabble. Leave home with Travel Scrabble. Or give Deluxe Scrabble Grand Crossword Game a spin. 
you'll find out why all America is saying... I'd rather be playing Scrabble! Scrabble brand word games. From Sell Shoe and Rider. When choosing gifts for friends, I'm my own worst critic. Everything must be five star. Which brings me to the House of Almonds. I simply can't find a superlative adequate to describe their California almonds. Not to mention the variety. They're a house of almond gifts of every mouth-watering flavor, beautifully gift-wrapped. So at holiday time, do as I do. Give the specialty of the house. Superlative. House of Almonds at fine shopping malls. In an effort to help identify both the living and the dead, an Illinois dentist has proposed cementing a tiny plastic identification disc to the teeth. Dr. Jeffrey Maxwell says it takes only a few minutes to have this disc bonded to the side of a tooth. It only costs $10. The disc could include name, address, phone number, and medical information, and it could be quickly deciphered by doctors or by coroners with the aid of a magnifying glass. Our Max Doman joins us now to talk about a disease we're going to hear more about. It's called chlamydia. And a few days ago, Kirstie had the chief of the venereal disease, disease section with the county health department on to talk about it. And she mentioned a test that is out there now to help find the disease because it's not very symptomatic in many cases. Yeah, this is a new test, and it's more reasonable and it's quicker. So there's a lot of uh, flack up to try to get doctors to do this test more often. Uh, the problem is that chlamydia is a serious disease, and we're taking it too lightly. It is probably the most uh, 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 prevalent sexually transmitted disease uh, among young sexually active teenagers and young adults. The serious part about the condition is that in 80% of the women that have this condition, no symptoms. In 25% of the men, no symptoms. So they don't know they have something wrong until the woman starts getting some very severe pains and now we have the pelvic inflammatory disease. The fallopian tubes might be plugged so that this woman could never get pregnant, never have children. That's a terrible price to pay. And some men, the testes become involved and they might become sterile. A terrible price to pay. So we're urging people to remind their physicians that we need to test for chlamydia. Now, the way you do the test normally is a smear is taken, it's sent to a laboratory, that makes a culture of it. That's a reference lab. That's a special lab. They make a culture. It takes 48 hours before it, and it's expensive. This new test is a little less expensive and can be done at a reference lab in 30 minutes. But the physician who does this test actually has to probe and take out a proper specimen, must have skill in doing this. If there isn't enough skill, there might be a problem. Now, if the test comes out positive with this new micro tract test, this, uh, that's fine. We know they've really got the condition. If it comes out negative, now there's some doubt. Did the doctor do a proper job? Mm -hmm. So we have a test that can find a very serious disease that before we couldn't find very easily, and it's very treatable if we find out about it. Yes, it's treatable. Okay, so we want to get that word out to everybody. Yes. Thanks okay, a lot. Max, Thanks, thank you very much. Coming up, a teenage genius who has scientists scratching their heads in amazement. And we'll have a late report on that Mammoth Lakes earthquake when we come back. For Your Health is sponsored by Extra Strength Excedrin, the headache medicine from Bristol-Myers. I've got a headache this big, and it's got Excedrin written all over it. I've got a headache this big, and it's got Excedrin written all over it. Excedrin, the big headache medicine. More medicine than any regular strength pain reliever. The most medicine you can buy without a prescription. Nothing is stronger. I had a headache this big, but I took Excedrin and it's gone. Excedrin, from Bristol Myers. Excedrin, the headache medicine. Polo isn't just a game. It's a tradition, a way of life. One that is captured by Ralph Lauren in his clothing and in Polo. Ralph Lauren's sporting scent for men. Now travel in the style of polo with the carry-on duo. This handsome garment bag and matching grooming kit. Only $20 with any polo fragrance purchase of $15 or more. Inside, you'll find a travel size of polo cologne. Available at the Broadway.
Pulsar Quartz for you and the ones you love. Pulsar, beautifully affordable at the Broadway Fine Jewelry Department. Of all the islands in the Caribbean, only Puerto Rico has 272 miles of sand and sea, roads of discovery to the beauty of the rainforest, the majesty of Ponce and old San Juan, and only Puerto Rico has the festivity of Le Lai, more fabulous places to stay and more flights. Bring someone you love to Puerto Rico. Only Puerto Rico has sights that warm you like the sun. Puerto Rico, USA. As we mentioned at the top of the hour, a strong earthquake rumbled through one of the most popular ski areas in California this morning. The quake measured 5.7 on the Richter scale and was centered between Bishop and Mammoth Lakes. Nick Clooney is in the newsroom now with an update on that earthquake. Nick, uh, what about the damage? Any reported so far? Yeah, John, we have some reports. Not a lot of damage. It was eight minutes after 10 o'clock this morning that that quake uh, set off a rolling sensation, we understand. It was felt as far away as San Francisco, Santa Barbara, and Las Vegas set off rock slides on mountain roads in the Mammoth area. Fortunately, as far as we understand so far, no injuries have been reported. Biggest brunt of the quake was felt right here in downtown Bishop, just off US Highway 395, the main skier's route to Mammoth. But the only property damage of any size in Bishop was at the Safeway store right here, where cans and bottles tumbled from the shelves. That store was closed for a couple of hours while employees cleaned up. However, local residents say the quake felt like a strong one. We were at a ladies' mobile home in one of the mobile home parks here in Bishop. And it's the first time we've ever been, any, been through anything like that. What it did was, you think was going on? Well, we pretty well knew what was going on, but it gives you a funny feeling when your car starts moving back and forth two or three well, feet and some? mobile homes yeah. start rocking back and forth. And we got a lot of questions about skiers. Actually, thousands of skiers were on the slopes this morning at the time of the quake. Ski lift operators did stop the equipment, but they just stopped it for a couple of minutes to check out for any damage. They didn't find any, so they started up again. There was an aftershock about an hour later. Actually, there were dozens of aftershocks. There was one large one, and that was uh, measuring 4.9 on the Richter scale. Our reporters, John Marshall and Phil Schumann, are on the scene. When we get any more details, we'll update you. John? Okay, Nick, thank you very much. Volunteers are working this Thanksgiving weekend to prepare food packages for starving people in Ethiopia. About 20 people, many of them school children, gathered at an American Red Cross headquarters on Wilshire Boulevard to help pack boxes with dry milk and rice, cookies, and even some small toys. The boxes will be taken by a Red Cross team departing for Africa next Thursday. The food and toys were purchased by the Red Cross Youth Fund. Nearly a thousand of the relief boxes were packed today. An American couple was released today after being detained five hours by Mexican authorities at an island penal colony a thousand miles southeast of San Diego. Virginia and Dale DeWitt had sailed their 38-foot yacht too close to the island. It's called Islas Tres Marias. A Mexican army vessel rammed their sailboat. They were arrested, but now they are free to sail on, on their vacation to Mazatlan. Recent escape attempts at that penal colony have made security there a little tighter than usual, they say. There's a desert search still underway right now for a San Jose family. Their twin-engine plane disappeared Wednesday en route home from Palm Springs. Aboard were 47-year-old Jared Dastrup, his wife Helen, their 21-year-old son Keith, and a family friend. Uh, his name is Tom Hensberger, also of San Jose. The ground and air crews have not yet picked up any signals from the plane's emergency locator transmitter, uh, at least not so far, so that uh, search is still underway. Two French military planes collided in flight over southwestern France today, killing 13 people. Investigators say there were no survivors of that early morning crash. The two French Air Force transport planes were flying at a low level when they collided. Both planes were on test flights. The pilots were trying out the performance of the planes. The French Defense Ministry is trying to determine what caused that collision in France. Kirsten. Hundreds of fellow classmates paid their last respects today to high school basketball star Ben Wilson in Chicago. Pallbearers carried Wilson's coffin into Simeon High School today as a huge crowd of mourners waited inside. Wilson was one of the nation's most highly recruited basketball players. He was shot by two 16-year-olds outside his school Tuesday. Wilson died of his wounds the next day. Late today, he was buried at a Chicago cemetery. Wilson's alleged killers are under arrest, and they are charged with murder. A Los Alamitos boy is in the big bucks and big business. Even though he is still working on his high school diploma, Cal Campbell introduces us to this latest teenage whiz kid. For any kid who grew up on Mr. Wizard and Carl Sagan, conducting a scientific experiment with the facilities of Rockwell International at his disposal is a dream come true. 
For this 17-year-old high school student, the experience was simply out of this world. Ken Hayashida watched carefully as his brainchild endured the rigors of scientific test inside Rockwell's vacuum chamber, a cylinder which simulates the same conditions one would find in outer space. At risk was whether a metal alloy known as nitinol would make a good power source for future astronauts venturing into deep space. Here on Earth, nitinol expands when cold and contracts when hot. Learning of the vast temperature changes in space when objects are half in sunlight, half shaded, Ken wondered if nitinol wrapped around a cylinder wouldn't generate enough energy to spin like a wheel. As it turns out, it does. The experiment was a success. Professional engineers think Ken Hayashida has a future. I think he's outstanding. I mean, he is one of the sharpest young people that I've ever met. And uh, I'll tell you, you just haven't even seen him in action yet because when he puts out his report on this thing, he does a first-class professional job. Ken says he's been fascinated by space technology since childhood. I was always interested in space, but I was always, I was always kind of surrounded by the entire thing of the United States going up to the moon. And, and I can remember coming up the stairs here and looking up at the moon and saying, gee, there's somebody up there right now. And um, it, gee, I can't even see them. And there's, there's, there's some men up there, though. And I always kind of wish that I could uh, get up there. And who knows, maybe we can. Ken Hayashida would someday like to join an expedition to the moon. Now, the competition for that type of assignment is pretty stiff, but judging from Ken's performance to date, the sky's the limit. Cal Campbell, News 4, Downey. Isn't that nice to see a story of, an, of a young man who's doing so well? It's John, amazing. Right? They say that he is, if this is any surprise to you, that he's in the genius category and has an unlimited future. He's in the genius Beautiful. category and got some left over, I'd say. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, Sandy White takes a look, and she's going to wrap up her series on what is in Santa's mailbag this year. And in the gift bag, too, today, the dark world of toy spies. <laughs> Call for a free brochure describing the Pasadena Symphony's exciting 84-85 season. The number is 449-7360. Mommy beats Daddy. I quit. Sore loser. Yvonne, how do you do it? Tennis, family, everything. Isn't easy. Now that Morgan was born, my doctor told me I had...